What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft Now today guys are going to be messing around with another type of reactor from reactor craft Which is the fission reactor now this one is going to be a really simple setup for the fission reactor There are a couple blocks that are offered for the reactor that we're not going to be using today But eventually I will make an episode where we go into a more in-depth and larger setup where we will be using all of those So for today's setup we can go down to the fission reactor tab and we're going to be using the regular fuel core and that's pretty much it from this tab. There are the options to use control rods, coolant cells, and uh, central control units. And I will get into those in the later episode. But for today's episode, we're going to be getting enough to power one full turbine, the one that we have downstairs, just from using six fuel cores and 12 steam boilers. So it's actually a relatively cheap setup to make. Uh, I think it's a lot nicer to actually set up than the high temperature gas reactor. And the great thing about this is if you guys remember the first reactor craft video that we ever made was on uranium processing and now we finally get to put that to use so I will link it in the description if you have not seen it already but the main thing is it's giving us enriched uranium dust and depleted uranium dust and we're gonna be using both of those today so the depleted uranium dust is a little bit less useful but uh, you get a, you get a ton of it and so we're actually gonna use that to make a hazmat suit today which may not serve a purpose but it does have reasoning behind it uh, which I will explain and then we're gonna be using the enriched uranium to actually make fuel pellets which are what are going to go into the fuel rods so this setup will get some use which is great and we're going to be setting this up downstairs right next to the last reactor we set up and then we're just going to hook it up to the same turbine uh, so that i can show you guys how it works since i'm not really going to be using these that much i just want to show you guys actual setups for them so now we get to come in and do some crafting not actually that much crafting that we have to do today uh, i did go through and do a little bit of the crafting already i have 12 steam boilers for us that's what we're going to need. I already crafted those tons of times before, which is why I didn't craft them this time. But they're also relatively easy to make. Uh, now we're also going to be making fuel cores. And we actually did make fuel cores last episode. If you don't remember, they were essentially the same as the pebble bed. Uh, or we crafted them to then make the pebble bed um, that we used last episode. So to craft these, really simple. Uh, it is a little annoying to make the fuel canisters. But other than that, it just takes some steel and some iron for the hoppers. And there we go. We're going to be using six fuel cores for this setup. So it's going to be uh, the fuel cores and then the steam boilers uh, right next to each of these. So we got that. And then we are going to be using uh, the leather and the depleted uranium to make the hazmat suit. So the hazmat suit, I actually don't know if we actually have it in this book. Let's take, let's take a look. Um, okay, so there isn't anything in here on it that I can see. Uh, I actually haven't found it in here before, but the main goal of the hazmat suit is to protect you from radiation. So uh, you don't want to be grabbing nuclear waste and holding onto it if you don't have the hazmat suit on. But sometimes it's not the easiest thing in the world to get rid of the nuclear waste uh, by automatically pumping it away. Uh, either you need to pick it up first to set a filter for it, or you might not have a way to automatically pump it away, and you might need to actually grab it. So we're going to be putting on the hazmat suit. Uh, not great to have to grab the nuclear waste, but you do not want to drop it on the ground by any means because it will just ruin the area you are in. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So to make this, we're going to be using the depleted uranium. Now, if you're curious how to make this, the depleted uranium is going to be just four depleted uranium dust in a square, and that'll give you two depleted uranium. So you're going to have a lot of this after running the processing setup, significantly more of this than you will have the enriched uranium dust. Uh, so that's why I'm actually going to put it to use today. Uh, now this offers no protection other than from the radiation from the nuclear waste. But yeah, you're going to get three radiation shielding fabric from this and then you can take that and then you're just going to do the regular uh, setup for gear. So uh, it's going to take 24 in total and we can grab that out. Let's get our helmet going here and let's get our pants there we go so i actually don't know how this looks let's get off the jetpack the iron leggings wow we look we look pimping it's uh it's funny because it's a little bit of a different color than my actual pikachu skin but you know it's relatively similar no one will know the difference uh okay so the next thing we're going to be doing is making uh neutron absorb or neutron reflectors that's what it is so this is going to take some graphite and it's just going to all go around steel blocks we're going to be making 14 of these. Oh, wait, they don't go in here. What am I doing? Regular crafting table. We need to be over in the work table. Okay, so we got the steel blocks. This is really where the main cost of this setup comes in, just with the steel blocks. Graphite is relatively easy to make. So there we go. We've got the neutron reflectors. 
Uh, now you can make uh, neutron absorbers, but the neutron reflectors are a little bit better in my opinion because they have 25% chance to reflect the neutrons that we will discuss later. Um, and then a 70 or well, it's pretty much anything that's not reflected is going to be absorbed. So it should be a 75% chance to just destroy the neutrons. Uh, and you do not want to let the neutrons out into your world because that will again be very bad for you. Now, one thing that I have noticed that I want to say right now is that the neutrons, I don't know if they graphical glitch with the particles, but they look like they're flying through the neutron reflectors. Yet in the reactor craft handbook, if we go to, I believe it should be accessories, neutron reflector. Uh, it has a chance of reflecting neutrons back in the direction from which they came, and it will allow for greater reactor efficiency by reusing a portion of the neutrons. Unreflected neutrons are absorbed. So uh, I don't know if it's just a visual bug, but we will get into that a little bit later. So I think it's time that we head downstairs and start working on some stuff. So I did expand down here a little bit. What my main idea is gonna be is to put a bunch of these reactors that are decently sized in this area and just send them all to this one turbine uh, mainly because I don't feel like constructing more of these I don't think I'm gonna use this to ever power anything maybe a battery or something using electrocraft but other than that there's no real reason for me to make a ton of these um, if I'm just trying to show you guys how to actually construct the reactors so uh, I don't actually have a good way to get over here with how I've set this thing up now but yeah we'll just walk right through here Remind me not to do that when this thing is on because it will destroy me. So what we're going to be doing now is setting it up right along here. It's a relatively compact setup. The only thing you need to keep in mind is actually insulating it because, again, you don't want the heat to escape. Now, typically, I would want to use concrete blocks. I don't know if there's actually different uh, insulation values. I know there are certain blocks that don't work as insulation. Uh, I don't know if other ones work more effectively as insulation. Right now, I'm just using stone bricks over here. Today, I'm just going to be using more stone bricks. But concrete is not that difficult to make, and it is a reactor craft specific block, so eventually I will use that. So this setup is going to be using the six fuel cores, and I'm going to put these right, I want to say we'll put them right here, but I want to pull them away from the wall a little bit because we are going to need some room. So I think I'm going to give us two blocks there. No, I'll give us one block there. We should be fine with one block. And then we're going to put all the fuel cores in a row, and then we can talk about the UI for these. So if we click on these, you can see that you've got three different columns that have four rows in each. So the center column is going to be for this uranium fuel pellets. And I'm not going to throw those in right now because then it's going to start going and we do not want the neutrons going into the world. So do not throw fuel into these until you have neutron reflectors or neutron absorbers somewhere in an adjacent block. So pretty much it's going to be outputting them out of each horizontal side. So you're going to obviously have to put one to deal with this direction, this direction, this direction, and then down there. And so that's the main goal of the 14 neutron reflectors. This setup makes it relatively easy to deal with, but, um, yeah, so you're going to want to make sure you don't throw fuel in there until you actually have the reflectors down. So pretty much until you have the full setup done. Next thing we're going to be doing is putting steam boilers right next to each of these. So it's a little different than the high temperature gas reactor setup where we heated up something and then we exchange the heat with a steam boiler. These, you're just going to have it directly going to the steam boiler, which actually, in my opinion, makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about putting in the gas to actually transport it and all that good stuff. There's no piping for that. You're just putting the water straight into the steam boilers, getting to 100 degrees Celsius, and then pulling the steam out. So it's actually a little bit weird not having the jetpack on. So I'm actually going to throw the jetpack on right now. And then if we ever go to touch the waste, we'll be good. So the, uh, the columns that are the first and third column, which are on the sides, are going to be for the nuclear waste. And we'll talk about dealing with that a little bit later. For now, I am going to just either leave it in there or pull it out with the hazmat suit on. But uh, the nuclear waste does decrease the effectiveness of the fuel core. So if we go into the fission reactor, go to the fuel core, there is a lot on this, um, but you can see the neutron emission any horizontal direction, that's what I said. It does have a max temperature of 1800 degrees Celsius. This setup is gonna get nowhere near there. It'll be sitting at around 100, um, but it stores nuclear fuel and is the source of all nuclear reactions and heat generation. Um, pretty much it'll emit neutrons, any horizontal direction, which can uh, impact other fuel cores, and that'll pretty much cause fission in those fuel cores, assuming they have stuff in them. Now, uh, pretty much it'll consume fuel when this happens, it'll gradually get waste in it, and by having waste in it, that decreases its effectiveness. So that's the main reason you want to pull the waste out, is because you want these to be as effective as possible. 
Uh, now, if the fuel core gets too hot, it'll begin smoking and eventually explode and you'll have a huge issue. So just a couple things to keep in mind. And pretty much the goal is to have the neutrons bouncing around in here and then you've got the neutron reflectors which will keep them bouncing around in there or at least prevent them from going somewhere else you'll have a ton of uh nuclear fission going on in here which will heat up the steam boilers and give us a bunch of steam so this should like i said be able to effectively power one of these steam turbines without any issue so the reflectors are going to be going in some key spots now you have to get this right or else you're going to have some serious issues so it's really simple to think about just think about each one of these shooting something out in each horizontal direction so by putting the neutron reflectors on each end of this right at the fuel cores on each end you're going to be getting all these fuel cores shooting it in both of these directions okay so that'll deal these two will deal with both directions for all of these now the rest of them you are going to have to line them on the side so that's going to take six on each side like so and then six on the other side and you should be good. So now we are covering every possible horizontal direction that these fuel cores could be shooting neutrons out of. And so they'll either bounce back into the fuel cores again, and in theory could infinitely bounce around if you're extremely lucky. Uh, not that that would happen because the 25% chance will just keep causing the percentage chance of it staying in there to get lower and lower every bounce. But uh, yeah, this could infinitely bounce around in here. Um, but what we want to do then is keep getting this insulated. Now, one thing to look at is that these neutron reflectors do have temperature on them. So it is a good idea to make sure that the entire thing is insulated. Don't think these are insulating blocks. So I'm going to put stone bricks all around this. It does make it a little bit larger, but we're gonna go like this. And I have to remember to put them below them too. Uh, so those will be going right down here. And oh, if I can get under there. Okay, so I can when I stop walking. Okay, so there we go. So those are fully surrounded. Now we got to get the ones on this side. I'm actually going to put the lower ones down first just because that'll be a lot easier. And then get the ones in there. And then we'll cover the tops of all of these. And I'm leaving these uncovered because we are going to have to deal with getting the steam out of the steam boilers, pumping the water in the bottom. And today, I'm just going to manually input things into the fuel core. Later, I will go over automation uh, for you know all of these. It'll be relatively simple. I'll probably just do one episode on automating any kind of... Uh, fuel core whether it be for the pebble bed for these anything like that um so we'll do that later but for now i'm just going to manually input them and then cover them so now what we need to do is get the uh piping laid down on the bottom so i'm going to mine under here and then when i fill this in i'm going to use this to fill in the fuel cores we do need to put stone down there too and now we're going to line the liquid pipes on the bottom to get water over here so this is going to use up a lot of water we've got a lot of steam boilers so i did make a new setup in there that's got a lot of pumps going so it can go like this and i actually think what we're going to do is this so we're going to loop it around back here and that'll count as insulation for this block and break this and then i think we want to input the water over here i think that'll be the best bet on inputting it so we can stop there and then we can fill this in right here and this is normally where we get the depleted uh, fuel out and the nuclear waste out. But like I said, um, I'll deal with that off camera. I'm just going to show you guys how to input the stuff today and show you proof of concept that this thing's actually going to be able to power a full turbine. So then we're going to take the steam lines and we're going to run them along the top here. Again, we're going to have to loop it around somewhere, but I'm thinking I'm just going to loop it around on this front side over here. So we'll bring it out and then that'll be the insulation for the top of this neutron reflector and then we can pull the steam out right over here. So one thing that I'll do is disconnect this steam line right here because this is actually gonna have some residual steam in it. And if I pull out my angular transducer, do I even have it on me? No, I don't have it on me. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say we could check the amount of steam in here, but if I were to just let this system run, then yeah, so we can get rid of the steam. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll hook this up and then we'll turn the system on. So what we can do is get the water going in there. Hopefully we'll have enough water. Yeah, we should have enough in there too. Uh, we do only have one pressurizer. I think we actually should have two over here because uh, I was getting to a point where these weren't able to process things fast enough, process the steam fast enough um, from the two condensers up there. So uh, just something to keep in mind. But we should have enough water for this. The steam should be good to go. So I think it's about time we drop in the fuel. Uh, each of these can hold four, and they actually last for a relatively long time. Um, yeah, so then you'll be able to, if you actually look in these, you'll be able to see the percentage depleted. 
Um, now again, I'm going to cover these with just regular blocks, but you could do things like trap doors if you wanted to be able to manually access this, um, because those do count as being insulated. So what we can do is just click in the uranium and should start going. And then we can cover these up. And I want to see if we can see the neutrons that I thought, I thought they were the neutrons flying out. It should be like in this direction or any side direction. Um, because when I was testing this, yeah, you can see right there, that's a neutron. That's what it would look like. But there's a neutron absorber or neutron reflector right here that technically should be absorbing it. So just, you know, something that I thought was interesting. But these are heating up uh, relatively slowly. They should be heating up at least. Um, assuming I covered everything correctly. Okay, so this one's filling up with water slowly. Yeah, they're all taking forever to fill up with water. Oh, these are filled up. Okay, so they're filled up over here. And we can finally connect this steam. Now, this is off. I don't even think these are producing steam because they're not at 100 degrees Celsius yet. 72, 86, 93, 94. Okay, so they should be to the point of producing steam. The ones over here, yep. So they should be good to go now uh, with all the neutrons bouncing around in there. So what we can do is turn off the redstone signal over here. I want to get away from this. And I actually want to make sure I pick this up. So I'm going to mine down here. And I don't actually, oh, I do have a lever on me. Good. This should be a lever. I don't know why I have a torch down here. But the steam is going to be going up into this thing. And you can see we're losing steam right now. So that is a problem. That's going to be a big issue. So we're turning this off. That's a perfect example of something that's bad. Now steam is going to be going around in the upper portion of here. It's not even going to dissipate, which is even worse, because once it gets out of the atmosphere, out of the build height, you're actually okay. But this thing might start glitching out now because of uh, the steam being up there. But yeah, so that's the idea of these not being able to process it fast enough. So one thing that I can do to deal with this uh, would be... I can always put a block down, but what I can also do is just break this and get rid of all of this water. So, just because I'm lazy, I'm going to break all of these, and that's going to get rid of a lot of water, and then we can put this down, and it's going to average out the water and empty these out so I can show you this running for a little bit. Okay, so now I should be able to turn it back on. I'll deal with that steam later. Just keep in mind that's not something you want. So, flip it back on. Now it should be able to deal with the steam. Like I said, we do need another pressurizer in here, but this thing should be able to consistently run uh yeah at max speed so you can see you have a relatively consistent stream here I'm just gonna run down here and come on over and we can look the pressure should be maintained at roughly 100 degrees celsius which is going to be where the water starts boiling and these should be staying full on all of them yep oh, come over here oh so this one's completely empty so yeah we do need better pressurizers and water production for this this does burn through water but as you can see it is producing more than enough steam to keep this one turbine running and there go the glitches okay so time to flip this thing off uh yeah so we got a lot of steam collected up here this actually happened before we're going to be getting horrible fps now so uh, i think that's what we're going to call it for today guys if you're curious as to how you get rid of this steam if it's stuck in your base, you can pretty much just cover the entire ceiling in blocks. So I'm going to go get cobblestone, cover the entire ceiling, and eventually once you trap the steam and it's not able to move anywhere horizontally, it'll just start going away when you place a block over it. So uh, unfortunate that it's going to come down to me actually having to cover the whole ceiling in that and then mine it out, but it's my own fault for not having another pressurizer over there to deal with all the... Uh, condensed water so uh, thanks for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something if you found it entertaining or informative in any way please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot and i will talk to you guys later